Hi, I'm Joanna DeCellis, editor of Club and Resort Chef Magazine. I'm here today with Charles Carroll, executive chef of River Oaks. Thanks for joining us today, Chef. Oh, it's my pleasure. Happy tell to be here. Us, tell us a little bit about your club. Well, we are in Houston and we have roughly 1,700 members. I have a team of 74 in, in the culinary team, but that's not all. It's, that equates to about 40 chef jackets wow. and purchasing and, and receiving and and uh, stewarding so it's a it's a big team for the culinary yeah and we have six kitchens three restaurants and we're doing about 11 million in food and beverage sales that's a big operation yeah it's a monster yeah, yeah. how long have you been there i'm going on my 20th year congratulations yeah, yeah. that's so wonderful starting in may i'll be my i'll be uh, working in my 20th year so it's, been a, it's been a long run so w having been there for so long with, with so much history with the club, where do you hope to take it next? How, how will it grow? Well, you know, <clears throat> I am blessed because it's 20 years. To stay somewhere a long time, uh, you have to continually to, to reinvent yourself or get excited, right? Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're, you're probably not going to end up staying. And, and I'm, I'm lucky that River Oaks does a lot of that for me because they're, we're constantly renovating, we're constantly trying to do things different, we're constantly doing pop-up uh, concepts and, and even right now as we speak we're renovating our, our poolside um, kitchen which you know we all often call snack bar, right? Yeah. We're, we're, which we were proud of that menu in the past which was roughly 30 items and and uh, Malamine China and silver and you know for a poolside experience it's pretty yeah. upscale um, and we decided to take it to another level so yeah. we're going farm to table and, and organic and, wow. and freshness a lot of the, the trends that you're hearing about today uh, we're bringing into our poolside um, experience so that's a whole nother deal yeah. it's a we're renovating the kitchen now and um, do you, do you do that style of food in other parts of the clubhouse? We do. Um, we feature it here and there. And of course, okay. we, we buy the best part. That's one of the part of being a, at a country club or a club in general is typically yeah. they want the best yeah. and they're okay to pay for it. So so we do it in different avenues of the club. But this is this restaurant will be all uh, yeah. organic and all uh, fresh and from the tree. Uh, How will you keep the costs in line with that? Won't this that raise your food well, costs? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no. We I have, appreciate your honesty. We, we have, no, but I tell you, I, I tell you what has happened though, because snack bars in general, mm -hmm. you know, when they open, because we open the pool in May, right? Most, mm -hmm. most pools open in the summertime. And what do you do for staff? Well, you either steal from what you already have going on in your operation yeah. or you hire a couple college kids, right? Right. Uh, so then you put a sous chef in charge of it and that kind of thing. Um, and that's worked okay in, in the past, but if we are, we're now, we're taking it from a snack bar and it's moving to a full-fledged restaurant. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be more expensive, uh, but the expense mostly is going to be in labor. Okay. And so I had to, you know, they asked, uh, the club asked me and the members and the board, they said, we want this. And then I said, I'm happy to do that. And I want to do that, but it's going to cost this. Yeah. So they have to be on board, which they are. And, yeah. and uh, so it's really, it was a labor that was going to jump uh, significantly. Okay, so how will that then change what you do inside of the clubhouse? Will you see, do you foresee them seeing this quality, this organic kind of thing, then wanting it in more places? Well, it's a good question. And the, the product we're already getting, so, mm -hmm. you know, the, it's a really good question actually, because uh, we have a turn restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, which services mostly uh, the golfers, but it's also kind of a destination. A restaurant where it's a lot of ge younger generation goes over there, uh, homemade pizzas, uh, homemade uh, buns, and, 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 and fresh grind burgers, and those kinds of paninis, and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have our, our grill restaurant, and we have three different uh, dining rooms that we feed from that. Uh, so my, ch my focus has been to try to separate the different cuisines. Okay. It doesn't make sense for us to have the same let's say birdie, which is one of our dishes that have been around for since the building has been there. <laughs> doesn't make sense for us to serve that in all three restaurants, right? So if you want the, the, the best homemade pizza, you should go to the turn. You know, mm -hmm. if you want the, the more of a fine dining and, and you know, uh, great beef and, 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 and lamb chops and, and that kind of thing, you want to go to the grilled restaurant mm -hmm. and then the pool is going to be its own identity. Okay. So that's my argument. Yeah. Uh, because in the club, environment oftentimes uh, we have to do everything for everybody all the time yes and so we're really trying to hold our ground 
um, saying we want to specialize and do what we do really, really well yeah. in each one of these venues. Yeah. Well, best of luck on that. That's a little initiative. secret, by the way. You can try that <laughs> argument. <you know? laughs> yeah. So tell me a little bit about all the different things. You have a lot of balls in the air. You've got a mm. podcast series. You've got books. You've got all kinds of educational and inspirational things that you're doing. Yeah. How do you balance all of that yeah. with what you're doing in your nine to five? How, yeah. how do you balance well, all that? Well, the nine to five doesn't exist. No. We all know that. <laughs> um, you know, that's a really good question, too. Um, I have an amazing wife, okay, and, and um, she's put up with all of this. and. And, you know, all this time I thought I was crazy and, and you know, there was something wrong with me. Why do I have to always have to be doing something else? And I just recently had an epiphany, maybe two years ago, that maybe I'm not crazy. It's, it's called being an entrepreneur. And, and that's what my presentation's about tomorrow, by the way. Yeah. Um, so now I have a name for it. Now yeah. I, feel, I feel personally a little better about it, right? You have a title. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not crazy, you know? Uh, so, yeah, the Olympic teams were a big part of my life, yeah. you know, and that, that gave me the foundation and the, and the discipline. Mm -hmm. um, the books were amazing. My journey's been, uh, I, again, I'm blessed again in my, my journey. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I realized that I, I need to put something else in my tank to make the car go, right? So, right. so these, are the di these projects are putting gas in my tank. Mm -hmm. And I, I am so excited about where I am in my life right now that last January, last June, I was doing things I wasn't even dreaming about in January. Wow. And in, in last December of, of 18, I was doing things I wasn't even dreaming about in June. Yeah. So the journey has bumped me along to anything from, from doing books, to the books being an option to be a movie, to shooting a TV pilot. Now that's been optioned um, to starting a fourth book. Um, with, a, with the full intention of it becoming a movie. Wow. And the podcast is amazing, the rest of the podcast, uh, Celebrity Secrets of Successful Life. That, that I just stumbled onto that yeah. because I was doing the promotion for the book. Right. So my whole presentation, which I'm really excited about tomorrow, is l be okay with life bumping you along to where you're supposed to be. Yeah. And so I had no intentions of doing a podcast, but because I was doing 60 interviews to promote the book, after the 20th one, I'm thinking, this is really cool. Yeah. Um, so I don't have an answer of how I juggle it, uh, but the one biggest thing is is to make sure that things are okay at home. Yeah. And that's a constant uh, work in progress, and I have my wife to thank for that. That's amazing. Yeah. So what's your favorite kitchen hack? <laughs> my favorite kitchen <laughs> hack? Wow, I could use that on the podcast. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. You know, um, I hate to be cliche, but people, you know, if, if you spend your time with the people yeah. and invest time in your people, it's amazing what you get back out of it. Yeah. And, and I had a, a 45 minute conversation with one of my sous chefs in my office and he came in. We just did a VIP event. I did a visiting chef dinner mm -hmm. Thursday night okay. and I brought him along and we had a blast and you know you're in the networking you have fun with other celebrity chefs and it's yeah. it's a really great time and the next day he came and said man that was just you know that was amazing he said you yeah. know and then he started asking me a bunch of questions mm -hmm. and i really didn't have time at the moment because i'm trying to get ready to, to come. i said you want know to sit down and so for the next 45 minutes we talked about philosophies we talked about my career and we talked about why it was important a b and c yeah and and just that 45 minutes could make a major impact on that young person's life, mm -hmm. right? That he will remember that conversation for many, many years to come and maybe impact him later on down the road. Not, not only that as a person, but now, you know, every single day, his days get better in the kitchen too. And, and so we can't lose, fa uh, uh, can't lose track of that. Yeah. And um, that's- Did someone do that for you early um, in your career? You know, there's been some special people in my life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I think I've, I've lacked um, like one major mentor, uh, but there was a, a chef, uh, his name is Phil Lerner back in, the, in my resort days. Mm -hmm. And his, his discipline was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also your keynote tonight, Chef John Foltz, mm -hmm. very, very dear friend of mine for 30 years and, and uh, emotionally special to me. Yeah. And um, I've always considered him a mentor just because of um, he's brilliant. And, yeah. and he's always taking time to be with me. So, and, and I, I think I get a lot of a lot of craziness, you know, inspiration from him. 
Yeah. You know, I go see him at least once a year. We do an event to get together every single year. Oh, that's awesome. And he just thinks different. Yeah. And so I, I've really learned a lot from him. That's awesome. So what three ingredients are in your kitchen at home always, no matter what? Uh, really good pepper. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, uh, we have a, a pepper mill on our Lazy Susan, and a friend of mine just gave me some uh, pepper uh, from uh, Philippines and, and his special peppers, have three different kind of blends. So I'm going to get, my next thing is I'm going to get three different um, pepper mills so I can yeah. separate them. <laughs> so we toast them to get the, uh, the oils uh, uh, out of them. So um, uh, pepper for sure, I'm a big pepper fan. Um, you know, it's so simple, mm -hmm. uh, but parsley. We have some herbs growing on on our, our balcony in, yeah. in, in um, Houston, and I love parsley. And, and that, I know that seems really simple, yeah. but just kind of rough chopped parsley, not not really yeah. minced, but just rough chopped, just so you open up the perfume of it. Yeah. I, I love putting it on uh, a lot of different things and even parsley stems. Um, let's see, there's two. Uh, truffle, if I can get it, yeah. uh, in my house. Uh, That's fancy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love truffle. I love truffle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Today. Ah, it's I my really pleasure. Appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate all, all that you guys are doing. I pre I know what how much work it goes into it. Yeah. And um, I know I think maybe there's a few people in the audience that don't realize yeah. how much work goes into the planning and the and the media part of it and getting people to sign up and and behind the scenes. I appreciate it so much. So I think you guys do a great job. Thank you, Chef. Where could chefs go to find more information about what you're doing? Uh, <laughs> well, I have a website, chefcharlescarroll.com, mm -hmm. and it's very easy. That's C-A-R-R-O-L-L, -L, chefcharlescarroll.com, and the Recipe Podcast, Yes. Celebrity <laughs> Secrets to a Successful Life. So go there and subscribe, download, and uh, we have, we're, we're proud, we have three shows, uh, Celebrity Secrets to a Successful Life, a lot of movie stars, um, and then we have uh, the Gourmet Club Live, which you're going to hear all these uh, great speakers that you have. Yeah. Behind the scenes questions and answers from them, Gourmet Club Live, and then uh, the recipe unplugged. Excellent. So, um, but yeah, just you just look up any one of those and you can find out pretty much yeah. what, what I'm doing, where I'm going. Excellent. Thank, thank you, you so then. much, Chef. Yeah, thank you. To see more videos like these, please visit our website, www.clubandresortchef.com.